What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today I'm gonna to show you a chest workout that's gonna maximize your chest development and we're gonna put the science behind the decisions to include the exercises that we do. And I'm also gonna throw in a muscle marker and this band to help us get the job done. Let's start with the band, actually the muscle marker as well. I've actually been practicing here as you can see. The idea here is if we take the band and we activate the chest by going into this position here, we see that there's a lot of things going on in terms of the fibers and the orientation of the fibers. They're not all running in the same direction. As a matter of fact, they don't even all have the same attachments. The fibers that originate from the upper chest here are coming off of the clavicle and they're running down towards the humerus. Right? But the most important thing is they're going from a high to low position. Whereas the fibers that come off of the sternum, again, a different bone than the clavicle, are actually coming in more of a horizontal direction, going almost straight across the chest out towards the arm. And then we have the ones that come off of the bottom portion here of the sternum and they head up. So these are not going completely horizontal, these are actually traveling from a low to a high position. So we should know, if you've been watching this channel, that in order to fully hit the chest, you're going to want to choose exercises that follow those fibers. Meaning, you're going to want to take your arm through different ranges of motion to better hit and align it with those fibers. So let's see what those would be. Well, we know we got to choose the staple exercises. We know we got to choose the exercises that allow us to load them the most so the pec gets the most capacity to be overloaded. And that starts right here with the bench press. So as I move my arm out in a bench press, the alignment of the arm is moving here almost parallel to these mid fibers coming off of the middle portion here of the sternum. And that's what happens here, as you see on the exercise itself, to hit the middle portion of the chest. It's a good developer of that portion of the chest. Okay, good. So the flat bench press, obviously we know there's a reason for doing it. But there's also a reason for doing the incline bench press and doing it as well. Because that's going to take the arm through a different position. It's going to take it from a low to a high position, right? We go here, we push up. What is that doing? You can see that now it's taking this upper arm and aligning it more in parallel with the fibers going here in this high to low arrangement. You can see that once again play out as I do the exercise. So, so far we're two for two, we've got two of the bigger exercises, we're able to load them up and now we've got to hit the lower portion of the chest. And the lower chest, we've probably heard, is best hit with a dip. Why is that? Again, it's not by accident, it's by anatomy. You take your arm through this position of an extended arm behind your body and it comes and it travels down. And as it travels down, you go from this high to low position, better allowing you to hit the lower fibers of the chest versus the ones that run parallel and versus the ones that run from low to high. So this is really what, what's in, important here is that you understand that the exercise selection is not random. It's done for a reason to try to take the muscle through its entire range of motion. But there's a very key differentiator of what I just said there. You want to not just take those exercises through their full range of motion. You want to take the muscle through its full range of motion and that is where we need to differentiate and that is where we need to jump off from. Because all of these exercises, see if you can tell the limitation on all of them. From the flat bench press to the incline bench press to the dip. They're not crossing midline. And we know that the action of the pec at the shoulder has capability to take this arm, not just through adduction, but across in horizontal adduction across midline. And all those exercises are limited by the fact that they don't take you even to midline, let alone across it. So how would you construct a better chest workout? What you'd want to do is you'd want to take those exercises and follow them immediately with a drop set of an exercise that's going to do that. So let's go back to the flat bench press. We go immediately from our flat bench press here to a horizontal cable crossover. Right now, the, again, people might even say too, there's a lot of fans of the cable crossover saying that it's a better chest activator from EMG studies than what a flat bench press is doing. But guys, if you rely on EMG studies and you wind up saying things like that and don't understand that, though it may have a better percentage of activation, it's still not capable of being loaded to the extent that a barbell bench press is, therefore limiting its ability to be effective it's if, if it's the only thing you do. But if you do it in addition to the bench press, you're getting the benefits of, of, of everything. So now we take that and we drop right into this horizontal cable crossover and we can see that we're actually now taking our arm 
all the way through and crossing midline and getting that complete activation of the chest in that plane of motion. So we don't have to stop there though, because we can do different planes of motion because this shoulder is a three dimensional joint. We can hit any angle we want. So if we go back, now we do our incline bench press. And when we're done with that, we don't rest. We immediately go back over to the crossover and we change the orientation so that our arms can go through this low to high arc. And again, we're not, we're not going to stop where we would stop on a bench press, on the incline bench press. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take the arm to midline and through midline. And you can see again, the degree of contraction and complete contraction we're getting of the chest by doing so. It's a difference maker guys, when you actually implement it. And we go to the dip, the same thing. Our hands are actually fixed on a dip as well. We can't get our hands to come towards midline because the dip station just allows them to stay in one position. But we can take the dip, we can load it up, we can use weights, we can do whatever we want to create overload with that exercise. As soon as we're done, we come back over here and now we change the orientation of the uh, cables once again to go from high to low. And once again, it's not just getting to midline, but it's crossing through midline to get a complete contraction of the chest, an essential element for a complete chest workout. And again, one extra exercise here, a push-up, one that we do a lot, I'm sure. You don't have to stop with just the push-up because we're being limited once again by the fact that our hands are in contact with the ground and cannot get across our body. So we use the push-up into this banded push-up where I actually can come up and drive one hand across the body to create an adduction across midline, right? One arm staying down in contact with the ground, the other arm goes across. Of course, we want to switch sides and work both sides here. But this is how you complete the development of your chest by including exercises that can be loaded, by including exercises that take the muscle through its full range of motion, and of course, applying full range of motion to all of the exercises, even if they are limited in how much complete range of motion they can apply to the muscle itself. That is how you do it, guys. If you're looking for a complete workout, that puts this all together, puts the science back in strength. Head to athletics.com. As a matter of fact, we don't just train chest, we train like athletes. We try to figure out ways we can incorporate chest training into a more total body explosive application of it so that we move like athletes, function like athletes, and look like athletes. Those are all over at athletics.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you let me know below. And if you haven't already done so, guys, please subscribe and make sure you turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video that we do, including the next muscle marker video. All right, guys, talk to you again soon. See ya.